everyone. I hope you guys had a great holiday and I hope you're looking forward to the new year. I know I am because I'm going to Niagara Falls and we're going to see Demi Lovato and a few other bands sing and do whatever else there is at Niagara Falls. Give some suggestions. I love them. Of course, I've never been there. I've never even been out of the country, so yeah. Anyway, today we are doing a video on packing for the hospital, and this video is more geared towards people who are going there on an emergency basis, rather than people who are planning to go there for surgery or whatever reason you would go to the hospital. So I have created a list of things that I have definitely found useful in the past to have ready to go. You can put them in a little suitcase like that, and just remember when you're going to the hospital, less is more. Um, you're going to think you want all these different things to do because you think you're going to be bored, but most of the time you're going to be sick. So, and it's definitely, um, the factor of you leaving has to be played into this because I've had many times where my hospital room is like filled with just stuff I brought and then my dad has to cart it out and, uh, it's taken him a few trips. So remember, try and cut down on what you're bringing. Another tip before we get started, if you are going to the hospital on an emergency basis, call into your hospital's emergency room. Um, we've done this, I think, every single time, because what we usually do is call my doctor to let her know I'm not feeling well, and she'll say, call the hospital, and it's kind of like getting a reservation at your hospital. So when you go into the emergency room and there are tons of people there, you get called first, um, so because you're already, your information's in there, they know what's going on, and you're just called in. It's like the best thing ever when you feel horrible. Anyways, let's get started on my list of things you should bring to the hospital. The first thing is probably obvious to everyone, and that includes all your toiletries. Um, I know some things, like if you have a nice fancy electric toothbrush, you're not going to buy an extra of that just to put in a suitcase just in case. But things like shampoo and conditioner, you're going to want to have in little baby bottles, which um, if you ever been to a hotel, just steal the ones in the hotel room because you can kind of squirt everything in there out and then put your own in because you know they're not quality. But that's what I've done. Or you can buy baby sizes of stuff like body wash, shampoo, conditioner. Um, I know I have some Tresemme bottles. They're actually decently sized, but they're still mini and you can bring them like to an airport. Basically you're just preparing for going to the airport. So you can buy little baby sizes. They also make little sets of bottles like this that I believe are all under three ounces which is the airport like cutoff. Um, and you can put in your own shampoo, conditioner, whatever you want to bring. Now I have an example of what you're going to get at the hospital if you don't prepare. And this is it. This right here is your hair wash and your body wash and it's like water and I have used this because I didn't bring anything so you don't want to be forced to use this <laughs> the next thing that I like to bring are slippers and I'm the kind of person who loves fuzzy socks in the winter time it's all I wear I get them for Christmas all the time it's just what people give to me and they're my favorite thing but in the hospital I don't always think they're the best idea and nurses don't think they're the best idea because they tend to be a little bit slippery. So I like to get the specific slippers with the grips on the bottom. And these are ones that people actually gave to me while I was in the hospital. They're about five years old. But you can see on the bottom they have little rubber grips. And then on the front they're super cute. Convenient for Christmas, which just passed. But yeah, I got these like five years ago. It's my freshman year. No, it was six years ago. Or seven. I don't know. It was my freshman year of high school. So now I'm a junior in college. Who knows? I can't count. But anyway, those are really great. They're super comfortable and you don't want to wear the ones that they give you in the hospital because they're like super scratchy and they're not cute. <laughs> the next item is for the ladies and I don't know if any of you will agree with this, um, but I always like to wear a bra even in the hospital. But there are so many rules like if you're getting tests done, you can't have anything that magnets will like attract so no metal sorry that was my phone no underwire like bra or any of that and I really don't like that rule so I found a few different ways to be able to get around that rule and the first one is to bring a sports bra 
Um, I do like to have that, but a lot of the time it's difficult to get off if needed for a shower, especially when you have an IV in. The other option that I came up with back in high school, I think, was to bring a bathing suit top. It can be either a strapless one like this, or you can have the halter top, where you can untie here and untie in the back. Either of those are fine because you can get them off without taking your shirt off. So if you have to go get tests done, it's no big deal, or if you have to get it off for like a shower. So I like that. And the other idea, um, this is not so much for if you're getting tests done, but just to be able to get off very easily is strapless bra. And I got this at Forever 21 for like seven bucks. Very comfortable, still feel covered, and yeah, I really like this thing. The next thing is, what are you going to wear in the hospital? For the first few days, they're more than likely going to make you wear the gown, but after that, they usually let you wear whatever is comfortable to you. Now, a lot of people think of bringing pajamas and just big comfy robes or whatever, but I have found my own little wardrobe for the hospital, which I think is comfortable yet stylish. I think the best idea for a top is just a plain old t-shirt. Um, the more layers that you put on, the harder it is to work with an IV. So if you are cold, I would say put on more blankets, but wear just a plain t-shirt. It's easier when you have the IV right here and it's comfortable. And I just, oh, this is just one from school, just a free one, um, just any loose t-shirt. As for pants, I have worn um, things like pajama pants before, but, you know, you have that good-looking nurse that comes in, and you want to look at least a little decent. So, I like these pants from, these are Forever 21, I'm sure they sell them at other stores, but they're jogger pants. So, they're a very um, light material, but they're cute. And you can get them in any kind of pattern. Um, I have, like, navy blue ones. I have like this black and white Aztec looking print one. Um, I just have a bunch of these and I think they're like very stylish but at the same time very comfortable. <laughs> On the note of having a good looking nurse or a man nurse, um, I like to bring makeup. And no, I'm not saying I'm doing a full out, you know going out at night look. I just like to put on a little makeup, little mascara so I don't look hideous to the world. <laughs> Plus, you know, you're not looking your best in the hospital, so I just bring a little bit of makeup to make me feel a little bit better too. Another thing that I like to bring are body sprays. And not perfumes, I just wanna make a note, not perfume. I would say bring body sprays because they're very light and they usually aren't like food scented. Um, anything that's um, really sweet or kind of like candy or florally, it's, is that a word? Florally? Whatever. It's very strong and it has always made me feel sick to my stomach. I like to have the light body sprays. I have a bunch of different ones. Like Body Fantasies is a really good one. They, um, I like the Fresh White Musk one because that is as far as you can get from food but still have that nice fresh scent. Like you took a shower that morning but you probably didn't. Body powders are also a good option. I just have this one. I think my mom got it from Avon like 10 years ago, but it's body powder. It doesn't go bad. Um, but these are great. And I just flung it everywhere. These are great um, just for a little fresh scent and they're not too strong. So your roommate isn't going to be yelling at you for, you know, making the room be too sweet. I don't know. Another thing that I think is great, especially especially for people who are having stomach surgery. In fact, this is probably only a good for people having stomach surgery, and that is a hug pillow. I was shocked after I got out of the hospital and started talking to people. When I told them about my hug pillow, they had never, like, used one. And it was just, it became, like, part of me. When I got my surgery, you feel very vulnerable and just very open, like, you just had your stomach cut open. So, a nurse made me a hug pillow. Very simple to make. You can just wrap a towel up, you kind of fold it up, and you wrap another towel around it and another towel. Probably about three towels, and you hold it on your stomach. It was like my best friend. It just made me feel so much more secure. But you can use anything. Like, you can use a real pillow. You can use your pillow pit. I just really recommend hug pillows for any kind of stomach surgery. It makes you feel so much better. 
entertainment wise you might get bored while you're in the hospital there's really not much to do and they don't let you outside a lot of the time so you're probably going to want to bring your laptop and your phone and the chargers do not forget the chargers make a list of things that you would want to bring that you can't like you're not going to put in your suitcase beforehand um especially if it's like an emergency thing you don't want your phone sitting in your suitcase for three months before you go to the hospital but make a list of things that you can give to somebody so that they can get it for you um, if you put your phone down, they're probably not going to mix that up with something else, so don't worry too much about that. But just remember to bring the chargers, because you don't want it dying on you, and then you're just sitting there like, no! You are going to get sick of your phone, though, and you are going to get sick of your laptop. So I like to bring, maybe I'm just a nerd, but I like to bring books, and one of the books that I had in the hospital was this one. It's a Jodi Picoult book, and it was a funny thing. Um, I'm actually a huge reader um but i never have time to do it and you don't realize how big a reader you are until you're in the hospital i was knocking out a book a day like a jody picoult book how many pages is this this is probably maybe 350 oh almost 400 and all of her books are like that they're super long but i was reading one a day because i just sit there and knock it out and my dad actually went to um what was it? I want to say it was Borders, but they don't exist anymore. But he went to Borders, and the woman started recognizing him every day that he came in for a new book. And she finally gave him a discount, because she asked him, like, why are you always in here? And he said, well, my daughter's in the hospital. So he got a discount. Just giving you a little tip there. Maybe ask for a discount. <laughs> the next item I would say to bring, only some of the time, though, is any medical equipment that you have. For instance, if you have an ostomy like I do, I would bring my ostomy bags and any other like paste or sprays with me because more than likely the hospital is not going to have the brand that you use unless you use Comitec because Comitec is like the big one that hospitals carry. And I go between Salts, which is not in hospitals, I don't think here because it's a UK company, and Hollister. And Hollister is, n at least not for the hospitals I've been to, they're not really big in hospitals. So I would say things like that that they might not have, bring with you. Um, especially, I have one tip, where is it? I have one tip for um, people who know that they're going to the hospital to get an ostomy. I would have loved this when I got mine. Go online, I think they have this at ostomysecrets.com get the um, sting free adhesive releaser spray um, I don't I think the packaging is a little bit different get the spray though don't get the wipes because when I got my ostomy the skin gets very raw it's not used to you know having to deal with a stoma poking out it just gets really bad so when the nurse is trying to take off your bag it's going to be very painful. This will save your life. I remember sitting there one night trying to get my bag off in the hospital, like the first time by myself, and I went through nine of their adhesive remover wipes, which are very oily. Um, generally in hospitals, they're very oily, so it's not good for making a new ostomy stick. But this stuff, very great. Go out and buy it if you're going into the hospital to get surgery. Now for medical supplies that I don't necessarily recommend, just based on my experience, and that is stuff like medicine. Um, when I would go to the hospital, they wouldn't allow me to take medicine that I would already purchased. They had their own pharmacy, and they would make me take theirs. Even though it was the exact same thing, I think they were worried about mixing it up. So that one I would check beforehand or bring your medicine with you, but you might not use it. You might have to use theirs. There's a couple things that I recommend you not bringing, and um, some people might be mad at this, because I know I am, but just based on past experience, I wouldn't bring these things. The first thing is jewelry, and you know, you're not probably going to want to dress up, put all these heavy metal jewelries on you anyway, but if you're that kind of person, I would recommend not doing that, not even bringing it along. I've gone in for outpatient surgery before and lost a really nice bracelet, and I know I put it in my bag that I handed to my dad, and I don't know what happened, but it wasn't there when I got out. Um, 
especially since I was loopy, I might have put it on and it might have fallen off and I didn't even realize. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you're the kind of person who wears a piece of jewelry all the time, you don't take it off, then I would say bring a little like bag, whoop, <laughs> bring a little baggie like this to put it in. Make sure it's safe in your suitcase or your bag or whatever you're bringing because you really don't want to lose it. Um, but like Zach gave me this ring, I don't take it off and I know I would have to in the hospital if I was getting tests done. So I would put it in here and make sure it's hidden away, safe. You don't want anybody stealing it. You don't want it to get lost. I said before not to bring perfume. Your roommate really might not like you if you start spraying perfume all over the room. Um, especially since perfume is a lot stronger than the body sprays. Body sprays tend to disperse a lot easier. Um, but perfumes, I would just avoid in the hospital. Another thing that they often tell you not to do is paint your nails. And it makes me so sad. But you can't paint your nails because if you ever get surgery done, they often use your nails as an indicator of whether you're getting enough oxygen. So if your nails start turning blue, um, they're not going to know if it's under nail polish. Sometimes what they'll let you do is have a few nails painted and then they'll just take off one for that kind of procedure just so they can see. But then you look silly with, you know, like nine or eight nails painted and the rest are not. So <laughs> nail polish is just something to avoid. Although I think it's alright if you wear a clear coat because you can easily see through that as long as there's no color pigmentation to it. The last thing not to bring, and anybody who's having stomach problems probably won't care about this, but for those of you who are viewing this and are going to the hospital for a different reason, they probably you're not going to like this too much, but don't bring your own food um, unless you're already like okay for food. The reason is a lot of the time they put you on clears or they have you on a liquid diet or something along those lines and they're not going to be happy when they see you bringing in your own food. Now later on when they clear you to eat like a normal diet, they usually don't care. I remember my dad would bring me up like milkshakes and stuff, but for the most part, they don't like that. I don't know. Not my rule, but just what I've noticed in the hospital. Just, just stick to their diet. They're giving it to you for a reason. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope this has given you some kind of tip for when you're going to the hospital. I really hope you don't go there ever for anything, but if you do, this should give you a good idea of what to bring. And if there's anything else that's missing from this list, make sure that you write it down. Things that you wouldn't want to pack away for a few months at a time. Um, write down so you have it ready to go and just put it in the suitcase with the rest of the stuff that you could pack. I also just want to say at the end of this video, I have created a new channel, completely different idea or like concept behind it. But many of you know that I started out on YouTube doing makeup and stuff about four or five years ago, so I decided to pick that up again, and the link for the channel will be in the bar below if you want to check it out. I don't know, maybe you like makeup, maybe you don't. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys later. Bye!